Hello everyone, welcome back to the world of wings, worms, and wonder. I'm Kelly Johnson, your Creative Nature Connection Guide. And today we're doing our February Viviva Colors painting project. It's very snowy out there, so it's a nice day to be inside after a morning out in the woods, painting, being cozy, have some tea. So let's celebrate February with a triangle. So triangles are a very stable shape. It's a very stable composition. So triangular composition, I think, is awesome for wildflowers because the composition is very stable. So wildflowers can be very loose and free form. And it's a really relaxing way to paint um, in a way that's still grounded, right? So we have little triangle. You can make yourself a little triangle viewfinder if you want. You can go out into nature and look through your triangle, look for triangular compositions if you want, or go through an art book or go through your sketchbook. Have you inadvertently made a triangle composition? You may have. It's, it's quite a natural, that pyramid state. You know, it's natural for us to feel grounded and, and stable. And that is nice sometimes. So I'm using the A5 Ivory Sketchbook. This is a new one. I'm using my already in progress one, as well as the Viviva Watercolor Pan Paints. And I know I used these last time and I will start using color sheets too, but I was just super in the mood for these paints today. So that's what we got. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial. We're going to go through some of the different ways you can make triangle compositions. And then we're going to do a few projects ourselves. We're going to paint some loose triangle compositions and then we're going to paint a bellflower composition. And you can see very loose, very relaxing, very up on the brush. You'll see when I say like sometimes we're just getting too tight and to have a triangle composition and a very tight painting style could make the image feel a little static, maybe a little too stable. I don't wanna say boring, but maybe you might feel that way. Maybe not, I don't know, it depends on the day, it depends on the mood, it depends on what's going on in your life. So I hope you have fun with this. And after the tutorial, I'll meet you back here for a little surprise because we are having a giveaway. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Have fun painting. All you need is paper, paints, brush, water, paper towel, pencil, triangle viewfinder optional. Have fun. Okay, here we are in the sketchbook and these are a few triangle compositions I created beforehand to show you. So you can see that they don't necessarily look like triangles, but if you sketch out a triangle first, you can see a triangle fits or you use your triangle viewfinder, you can see like, yeah, that actually does fit into a triangle. And it doesn't have to be equilateral triangle either. So you can just see it creates that sort of grounded and stable shape in the composition. Okay, let's open our sketchbook. And I've sped this up a little bit for you because this is our warm up. First, we're gonna draw some triangles. Just lightly sketch triangles of different sizes on your page. As many as you want. I'm gonna do three here. And get your brushes and your paints and everything set up. Now, just begin in that first one to paint three flowery type shapes, very loose. You can see I'm kind of up on the brush there just keeping it super loose, not any specific flower. Now this one, I'm way up on the brush, which unfortunately, I apologize, makes it hard for you to see. But get way up on the brush and make some grassy shapes in a triangle, just like you've seen perhaps muley grass or any other kind of ornamental native grasses, all wild and triangular. I'm using greens and ochres get that late season look. A few splashes give that motion. Now this is going to be cone flower. So again, I'm kind of up high on the 
brush, you're going to do three cone flowers or whatever flower you like. You can do the same as me or not. I like them because their cone is like a triangle. Thought it fit this well. And you can see I do four here, but that's that last one is smaller and kind of in the background. It's not one of our like main legs of our triangle. Just keep going, adding the leaves, the stems, integrating it, keeping triangular shapes and that form in mind. But you don't have to stress it too much. Just like with wet on wet watercolor, don't stress it too much. Get too much paint, just dab it off. Working your way, it's fun to have three going at the same time. It's kind of hard because you're trying not to stick your hand in the wet paint, which you can see I'm <laughs> trying not to do here. But you can also work around while one's drying. You can go um, tinker with, with a different image. So that's one thing that's nice because working in a sketchbook, you can't change the page, right? So a few small things going on the same page is nice. I'm just adding some leaves in here and I really went stable on this one. I added ground, right? This one's quite literal. Just filling in the petals. Again, it's not any particular flower. I'm just making an imaginary flower out of the parts that I know from observing flowers, you know? It got a little thick there, no biggie. Just dab it off, let it dry, you can always come back in. Again, we're keeping it loose. And let it dry. Now come back in and add the, the yellow the pollen on the top of the cones of the cone flower. It's a little hard to see here, but it looks quite nice in person. Plus it gives that pop of yellow with the purple complementary color, you know. We've got the greens, we've got a little bit of a triad going. Here I'm adding blue to the centers to mix with the red a little bit. So it won't be so purpley purple, but it will be, you know, all pansy sometimes, almost as like such a dark color in the center. I'm letting the blue blend with the green, adding some details. That's all I'm doing here is just adding just like Sometimes you call it visual confusion, <laughs> but just adding details here and there, just playing with it, having some fun, not taking any of it too seriously, just playing around in my triangle. Working around the page. I'm even kind of working in a triangle. I didn't really think too much about that, but add details and there you go warm-up complete okay now we're going to make our bellflower so sketch out lightly a triangle and I decided to go for a vertical composition here with this one but whatever you want to do is fine and we're gonna lay in with blues our basic flower shape, real loose here. See, and I'm using that triangle sketch to decide where to put the sprays of flowers. And again, we're not going for botanical bellflower or any specific variety. We're just generally having some bellflower fun here. So just dabbing in very loose watery um, splotches, I guess you could say that will represent the individual flowers, not getting too tight, throwing in some leaves. Are these the actual leaves of the plant? No, these are just leaves. These are just leaves for fun. So just lay out that triangular composition, lay out your flowers. And I did the leaves kind of like a nice base here. I'm not getting too dark. I'm adding a little little dark in there, but I'm not I'm not going full detail here or anything. I'm still just sort of 
laying out my design. your painting is dry now we're going to come back and add the details and we waited for this so things didn't get too muddy or blend together too much so I'm taking purple now and just sketching kind of little lines to define some of those bell-shaped flowers which are basically triangles so we've got triangles within triangles here and don't you know be too formulaic about it. Just look at the little splotches of paint and let them tell you where the bells should be. You know, thinking about the paint and then also thinking about the highlights. And just go through and add your little bells. And once you have all your bells, you don't have to worry too much for them to dry. Go back in and start adding some darks and some shadows. And I even add purple into the leaves as a shadow because colors in nature are all bouncing around off each other and it also integrates the plant part to the flower part. And we'll add some green up top later. But it also adds a nice shadow. That sap green and purple make a nice dark green. So working around those leaves, grounding them Just letting my eye lead me around the page. I did not have any sort of plan for this or for those triangle sketches, warm-ups. Just literally going by feel. We got a little heavy-handed there, but that's okay. It'll dry and we can go back in there. But I did want a darker shadow towards the bottom. And just keep working around your page, adding details, adding darks, and at the bottom of each triangle bell, add a little dot because it's a little bell part of the um, pistil and stamen that hang down. So each bell, but again, don't be too systematic about it. We don't want to get too stable here, right? But add a little dark, little little splash, little, little dot. They don't all have to be the same at the bottom of each bell. And then go in in between some of the bells and add some darker purple for shadow. You mix it with the blue, mix it with a little green, whatever your eye tells you that it needs. So I'm bringing some blue back in there. And now I'm just bringing, I don't know, just having some fun, bringing some purple dots in. It brings that purple down, adds a little bit of interest. Maybe they're dried fallen flowers. Who knows? Just have fun with it. Adds another shape to the composition. working around the page, making any finishing touches that we might want or need. And then I'm just writing bell flower and drawing, painting a little bell. Just loose and gestural. Remember our little dark bell part at the bottom? Kind of shows the colors we used. Kind of just fun. We got to add a triangle because it's a triangle composition project. And a little sunshine, just to bring a little warm into that mostly cool composition. And voila, there we go. Triangle composition bellflower. And here's all of our projects. You could see how the wildness of these bellflowers, and that's a family of flower that's not an exact. So you could think maybe some of the most popular might be bluebells, but there are lots of wildflowers in this bellflower family. I just did sort of a generic one. I was in a sort of bluey mood with the uh, shadows on the snow and stuff outside. It was very pretty. So, but you can see how getting a little wild with a stable composition really works. And like here, for example, I gave a circular background, but with a wild triangle-y, not wild, but loose triangle composition. This is really a classic, you know, just like a trillium leaf. Um, but yeah, that was my sketch sort of idea for today. You can just go grassy if you want. 
all sorts of ways, this is a little bit more elaborate grassy we did in the video, all sorts of ways to play with triangles, to play with wildflowers, and to play with paint, which is probably the most important thing. It really doesn't matter what you paint, what your composition is. If you like the idea of a triangle composition but don't like wildflowers, paint something else. Paint whatever you like, birds or um, machine parts, whatever you want. Create your own composition. Just play around with some triangles, play around with some paints, and these sketchbooks, I love this sketchbook. You can see I've almost used it up and I've covered it in stickers, but it lays, I don't know if you noticed, it lays flat. And that is such a treat to not have that annoying spiral, but to also have the sketchbook be able to lay flat as well as have the little strap to hold it shut or to, and I didn't do this, but um, in this one, but hold your page down. And when I'm out in the field, I definitely use this strap to hold my page down a lot. So that is the Viviva A5. It comes in ivory and um, like plain white, and it is not leather. Like some of you may know I'm vegan, so that's really exciting to have this very lush, sturdy, durable cover, but not have leather. So it's not leather. Um, it is completely vegan and it is handmade by Viviva Paints in their Women's Empowerment Initiative. So um, you can check my website or check their website for more info on that. And then, you're eagerly waiting, the giveaway. I am going to be giving away two sets to two lucky painters of Viviva color sheets. We have the original 16 colors and the metallics. So in the comments of this video, I want you to share what you painted, share what you think about triangles, share something, maybe your favorite wildflower, share something that had to do with this tutorial, and then make sure you're subscribed to Wings, Worms, and Wonder on YouTube, and make sure you're subscribed to Wings, Worms, and Wonder on Instagram. And at the end of the month, um, let's see, let's give you some time. So February 29th on leap year, at the end of the month, I will draw, I'll put all your, all your entries um, correlated with numbers, and I'll draw a lucky number, and then I will get in contact with you. So make sure that you comment, follow Wings, Worms, and Wonder on YouTube, follow Wings, Worms, and Wonder on Instagram, and you know, it'd be great, tag Viviva, tag me in them as well, um, so everyone can see what you're painting and maybe get featured on their, on their site. So good luck. One lucky winner will get the, the regular original sh set and one lucky winner will get the metallics. And I can't wait to see what you post. And if you do post on Instagram, be sure to definitely tag me in your posts so I can cheer you on. Have a great day. Bye.